from Philly dying now, like who went to Philly dying. <laughs> There is no better way for us to go live than in the middle of a conversation. <laughs> Why is everyone from Philly dying? I would love to know the answer to that because I'm sick. Everybody's sick. Very on brand for the city of Philadelphia um, to invent a new illness and infect everybody with it. Alex, I didn't mean to take over your beginning of the show. No, no, you know, the, the, the beginning of the show belongs to Corey. Let's be honest. Uh, so, you know, true. No, hold on. No, right. no, no, no the, the beginning of the show belongs to Corey. He's in here with his scoops. He's going to tell us everything except for the thing that I want to know. I will ask the thing that I want to know at the end of this. Don't let him leave without me asking the thing that I want to know. Because I'm she's pretty gonna, sure he's not going to talk about it. She's going to remove me again and then blame me as she usually I won't, does. I won't, you let know what's I won't let it Thank happen, you, Corey. I am your advocate you here. We gotta, Corey, I don't okay. know what you're talking about. I've literally never removed you from stream. Never, not, not once. In my life. In case you're wondering the chaos that you just walked into, this is your NXT post show for April 16th. Um, coming <laughs> off of, <coughs> excuse me, Stand and Deliver. And last week, heading into Spring Break It Kin, as we call it here. Um, a, a pretty decent sized episode considering this is go, like a go home to uh, special. For next week so love to see that some consequential things happening on the show tonight we do have Corey with us to talk some scoops we of course have alex palowski but get in those super chats get in those humper chats Corey has been absolutely killing it on fightful select for the nxt brand and beyond now um i don't even know what to tease there's so much stuff on fightful select so i'll just tell you to go over there and subscribe we're putting more stuff on the free tier so that you can see those headlines as well um, more contract news coming down the pike. You had context about Drew McIntyre over the weekend. So much happening on FightfulSelect.com. Uh, that free tier is great. You can kind of see just the headlines of what's on the paid tier. But if you do want to join the paid tier, you get all of Corey's scoops behind the paywall. You get me and Alex being insane every week, including him being normal yesterday, which is the most insane thing that's ever happened probably to our show. You can also join the Fightful Select Discord if you're like, hey, Twitter's got a lot of toxic weirdos. I don't want to be around them. Well, you can come into our curated environment on FightfulSelect.com. Join the Discord. I joined. I'll probably stop going in there in a week like I always do with Discords. It's my toxic trait. But let's get into tonight's scoops and episodes. Corey, we had a couple things that we wanted to hit on. Um, but we can start with kind of what's been your longest ongoing story since you've probably even joined Fightful with Julia. We got some news on when we can expect to see her debut, what her plans are. I'll kick it to you for a little bit more context. Uh, but some some more good news coming for Julia. There's a lot of stuff going on with Julia now, okay? Um, for, so basically with Marigold, is, it's going to be five five or so matches. I, I was described as a handful, but it was expressed to me that it still could all change a little bit more. It could be extended a little more. She could have a little few more matches. I know that the Sari match, the tag team match that was announced immediately, that was a big match that Julia really wanted to have before she did leave for WWE because obviously mm -hmm. Sari left under not the greatest circumstances, so we probably won't be seeing her back in WWE for a while. But um, yeah, just so to interject real quick, Corey, to Marigold, just for people's context, if they might not yeah. know, is yeah. <laughs> Agawa's, uh an offshoot or I guess complete separation, but a new Joshi promotion that came up as he separated from stardom. He took Julia with him on the way out. Julia now signed with NXT, but Saray or Sari wrestling in Japan, you might remember her if you watched NXT as Saray fantastic wrestler they never really found a character that worked for her released her i think there were at least rumors of attempts to try and get mm -hmm. her back so this could um maybe open that door again a little bit but just in case people were like marigold what a beautiful color but what the hell are you talking about just wanted to catch them up to speed on that i'll throw it back over to Corey for more details but uh it's an interesting name for a promotion so i just wanted to <laughs> give people a little more context there no, it's 3.25, 4am for me right now. So sometimes I will forget important things like context. So Coward. it's good that Kate's here. Stop it! <laughs> anyway, uh, anyway, as I was saying before, I was rudely interrupted with context that wasn't needed in the slightest. Um, <laughs> uh, no, she. it looks like she's going to be in NXT for NXT Heatwave, which is scheduled for Money in the Bank weekend, July 7th. And... From what I've gathered, from what I've learned, is that 
she will be coming straight in for a title match. Now, whether that's the NXT Women's Championship or the NXT Women's North American Championship remains to be seen. I haven't been able to confirm that either way, but I have been told that the Roxanne match is one that a lot of people are pulling for. That's a big reason why they're trying to keep that. Some people in NXT really do want Roxanne to stay there longer and not go up in the draft. While I'm still talking about Roxanne, I may, may as well just say I still don't have any update on whether she's going to be going up at the draft. She's declared for the draft, but I've also been told that just because someone declares for the draft in NXT doesn't mean that they will be drafted to Raw or SmackDown. So that's an interesting little anecdote that for me was a bit confusing, but at the same time... But uh, back to Julia, she's likely going to keep her own name, which a lot of people were... Uh, pestering the hell out of me about a lot of people are asking me was she going to keep gloria here's the thing with gloria gloria is a song that wwe could easily get the rights to it wouldn't be too expensive it wouldn't be anything like that i think julia actually does have owned the rights to herself which obviously makes it a lot easier in that regard. i'd have to double check that but from people that i spoke to in production you can really just expect to get a dev Def rebel song as much as we're all going to groan at the thought of that it's the way they're doing things now. Everyone gets a Def Rebel team, no matter how terrible it is. Or is there like any that. chance they give her a last name and it's just spelled the same way, but instead they call her Julia Gulia? Like it's it's spelled Julia Julia, but the last one is pronounced Gulia. Is it? And is there, I just that's just one Adam thing. That, that's my own personal hope. I just I just like, hope you no. Know? I can't, I can't speak to uh, what they just, we're going to decide on that front. Coward! From, from what I... <laughs> I've been Make told I'm not news. supposed to speculate on this Make show. And news. now I'm being demanded by both the hosts <laughs> to speculate. Like, come on. Yeah. Trip me up. But, um, yeah, I, I don't think they're going to change her name at all. I think she's just going to be Julia. I, a lot of people are like, oh, she got uh, her name thrown up at Stand and Liver. So, obviously, she's going to keep her name. Not that wasn't something that was necessarily guaranteed. Obviously, we had Ricochet was introduced oh. as Trevor Mann, which was weird because he was called Ricochet for WWE anyway. Um, and obviously, Asuka was called Kana in her in her introduction, so yes. that wasn't a guaranteed. Uh, and your doppelganger scenario. was Prince Devitt. You know, there's all these things. <laughs> <laughs> Look, it's not just me saying that. Tom LaValle to begin with. Uh, Corey's SGS name is Scoops Balor, which I Balor. absolutely yeah. adore. And some more love for you. That you know, it, it pains me, but if you're going to send us your money, I got to read them, I guess. But Josh saying I'm a Corey Brennan stand. He's the man. Acknowledge him. Uh, we do. We acknowledge him here. But. Uh, some some good news there for Julia. I'm rooting for Julia Gulia with Adam Sandler as a valet. I just I think it would be fun. Why not? Uh, but stay tuned to Fightful Select for more on that story as it's evolving. Yeah. Um, we also had some other news pop up this week. I'll, I'll throw it over to you, but there's been a lot of questions, and I know you're getting hounded about the draft. There was a report that they're trying to legitimize NXT as a third brand. I feel like NXT has always been in this place and I'm seeing yeah. it now in ROH and the AEW brand and this, this happens of, are you an alternative under the same umbrella or are you developmental? You can be half and half, yeah. um, but it does make your mission statement very cloudy because then you have people like me and Alex wondering what's going on with booking. And they're like, well, no, our goal is to develop talent. We don't really care about, but like it's all kind of all over the place, but um it sounds like from what you said, and I know we have questions about this roster continuity thing that you've been hearing because it doesn't seem to be here like yeah. legit, from a creative standpoint. I'm sure procedurally it might look different. Um, but what can you tell us about NXT and the draft? Any talent that you can speculate on that you think would be going up? Anything that you've heard more legitimate whispers of? Um, obviously, nothing can be reported because it's the draft and I, sometimes I feel like it's a shoot. Like sometimes I don't even think they are no yeah. <laughs> attracting to each brand, but this is your speculate wildly or share thoughts and opinions uh, area to speak to as well as anything you want to add to the report. And um, the this thing is with the draft is you kind of hit it nail on the head there. Kate. It is kind of a shoot for a lot of people because Shawn Michaels uh, from as early or not as early as late as, over the weekend, I was asking around, just saying, does anyone have any idea? Sean is still telling people, don't know yet. Decision has been made yet. The only two names that I know for sure are Mello, who we saw lose tonight, and I'm sure is getting a 
a very similar uh, goodbye to Braun Breaker because obviously uh, that match with Trick was his swan song. I I don't I I think everyone knows that. I, I don't think I have to report that, do I? Um, but yeah, I'd expect to see footage similar to what Braun had when he said goodbye. I know Melo's a heel, more distinctly heel, but obviously with the connection Melo has with Sean and with the rest, I would I would expect to see that video in the next day or two. Um, but yeah, so Melo and Ilya are the only two that I know for sure are going to Raw or SmackDown. That's the, they're the only two names I can confirm with close to or 100%. As for who might be, I was told that the family were under consideration. Um, but I don't think it's the whole family. I think that Rizzo and Luca will probably end up staying in NXT if they do go up. It'd be Tony and Stax on their own. They're both ready. I think they're both completely ready for the main roster, and Rizzo and Luca can catch them up at a later time. Uh, Corbin, Corbin's been long considered to go back up to Raw or SmackDown. He's a free agent at the moment. I imagine he'll get uh, put on the same brand as Braun because. There's been a couple of pitches now. It, it, I reported it after Stand and Liver that there were pitches for them to go up together. Those pitches are getting louder from what I'm told. So we could end up seeing them together on Friday. I'm not sure on that. That's not a report. That's just, it's just, there is a lot, especially considering how over Corbin is in France. And, uh, and then just with Roxanne, Roxanne, just because she is declared for the draft, does not mean she will be drafted. There's a lot going on with Roxanne right now that I honestly don't think they'll know until the day of the draft, the first night of the draft, if they're going to bring Roxanne to our SmackDown. So, yeah, it, it the draft is both confusing and just it always is, Corey. <laughs> yeah, I just, I just hope, I just hope that it becomes a little more clear who is going to be part of the draft because, man, just going in blind would be. I don't know if it'd be the uh, right decision, but I oh probably should include the bigger part of it of the report. <laughs> um, main roster talent will be ed- eligible to go down to NXT. They will be drafted to NXT. This won't be like any of the runs that we've seen. But if we're going off the runs that have been in NXT recently, Natalia, uh, Ivar, we've got Final Testament now. They're clearly the good showing- brothers for five minutes. They're clearly showing us all that these talent, these developmental talents can keep up with these main roster talents. They might not be on the same level as them, but they can damn sure keep up with them and they learn from them. So I, I do hope that we do see some of the veterans like Natalia uh, be drafted to NXT and just wrestle all these young kids. Man, I'm so intrigued to see um, what main roster talent, the, the person I'm, honestly feel like that hasn't been talked about enough that I'm so intrigued to see where he ends up as Dijak because he's been such a stalwart for the brand. He's been yeah. so valuable there, but it's also like that guy's ceiling is higher than NXT guy that gives great matches to young and growing talent. And he Absolutely. could do so many things on the main roster. He could be someone's heavy. He could be himself. So I'm just intrigued. I'm sure if the family gets drafted up, Alex is going to quit the NXT show. So that's, that's going to be rough for me, but we, we got some more super chats and helper chats coming in. We got this one uh, from Jam Beard that says they'll change her name from Julia to Akira or some other very common Japanese female name. No. Now, we've seen a trend away from that, which I yeah. like just in general, not just with Japanese wrestlers or whatever, but like Jade kept her name. Sean Spears kept his name uh, coming in. So hopefully the new era that they are shoving down our throats, but seems to be following through with on certain things. Um Hopefully that's a, a part of it where people get to have their names if they want them or at least more accessible names. But Josh saying, does WWE consider the NXT title to be a world title again since 2019? Its status was so up in the air when V stars events uh, started not counting reigns. We saw so much inconsistency with that on the main roster about Charlotte has had more named amounts of title reigns than anybody. That poor woman is like, sometimes your NXT one counts, sometimes I, it doesn't. At this point, if they retroactively added her NXT title reigns to her main roster ones, she would surpass her father without yeah. ever winning another title. And that, I don't think they want to do that. I think they want her to actually win a title on the main roster to get that record. So they're like, no, NXT runs don't count. What are you talking about? That's weird. As, as far as I know, um, 
from my understanding internally at least they've never considered it to be a world title that's that's just from what i've i've been told anyway because when i was told that about the third brand that was obviously my first question is is the nxt ti- nxt and nxt women's title is going to be world title level and while wwe they do tease it and they keep like obviously acting like it's this big prize to win they and to be fair Becky coming down, winning it, Charlotte choosing her Rumble win to go after it. Those kind of things do add value to the title. But at least internally, it's never been considered a world title. It, whether that's whether that's just something silly, because then you open the plot hole of the same thing with the Money in the Bank briefcase, where what now you can challenge for titles that aren't world titles with that win. So it's a bit confusing. an open challenge if you're Austin Theory, because that was... Yeah. Bob Pitts, but Jim Beard saying Corey is NXT anonymous, right? Answer the no. question, Corey. No, for God's sake, no. And it's really annoying because I've asked every single source I have in NXT who the hell is behind that account. Nothing. The only thing I've learned about that account is that when Blair Davenport was revealed as NXT anonymous, that was supposed to be when it was supposed to end. <laughs> well, that sounds just like something anonymous would say is all that I'm going to say. But Jam Beard saying, I kind of hope Nakamura gets drafted to NXT and give him a second NXT run similar to how Finn Balor got. Um, since we have Finn Balor on stream with us, uh, what are your thoughts about Nakamura emulating the run that you had? I don't, um, you know, Finn was like a little bit more in the prime of his, I'm sorry, you were a little bit more in the prime of your career than Nakamura is right now. But uh it, it feels like they built him up to be such a badass with these vignettes, and then he's just lost and lost and lost. Um, I don't know if NXT is the right call for him, but we asked you the NXT to main roster thoughts. Any thoughts on who might be coming down or anything that you've heard? From what I've heard, like the thing is with Sean is he, he has who he likes on the main roster. There isn't It isn't just some he picks a number between one and ten i want you i want you i want you or he takes what triple h gives him he re- specifically requests people so pe- like the new day when they came down and won the nxt tag titles, that was a direct request from sean to have them come down for a little while so i don't know if that's going to be how that works in the draft but i would say that there's people like cedric alexander ashante de adonis uh people like that are just kind of middling like mia yim maybe that kind of person i don't see it being anyone that's a mid carter to a main eventer being drafted down. See, I don't see that in the slice. And from what my understanding is, the people who are going to be drafted down are going to be people that are kind of middling out on the main roster. So it does seem like they are doing their best to kind of just give, give these talents maybe a refresh. And sure. I I know you mentioned Dijak earlier, but I think he is going to be staying around in NXT for a while, especially considering his contract status. An update on that that I can give is that I know that Triple H and Shawn Michaels in particular are both very, very high on him. They both very much it want him be. to resign. They, there's been no, there's been no update on whether he is resigned or anything like that. But that's what I can say. There is a, there is a big push. It would at least within NXT to resign him to a longer deal. I don't know if he's going to be part of the draft in the slightest. Um, he's another one that's a question mark right now. There's a lot of question marks on NXT right now because there is a lot of people that are already ready, and I think we can all agree on that. But um, yeah, yeah, Alex, I've been saying that for like a year, so <laughs> agreed with you there. Before you get out of here, we'll just let you take a, a victory lap on some scoops that you had before, including Javon Evans, who showed out tonight with Ilya Dragunov. Some really great scoops on on Select today, more than just kind of like your rundown and a few surprises. Tonight was a little bit heavier of an episode, and. Uh, Javon Evans just continuing to to be extremely impressive very, very early on in his life. Never mind NXT debut. This kid is a teenager and he's unbelievable. Um, I, I loved that. I love if it's going to be predictable for Dragunov, have it be an incredibly productive loss for somebody else. Right. And he's yeah. just continuing to impress. Feels like he leveled up very quickly. Uh, any any more word on on reception for him or anything else you want to talk about in your scoops thread today? Everything with uh, Javon Evans has just been nothing but praise. Like a lot of just surprise, like genuine surprise from a lot of people, just how good he is for his age. And I think that where he was tonight, and I've said this to you guys every single time I've talked about Javon Evans, he's getting the Carmelo Hayes treatment. His second television match is a one-on-one match with Ilya Dragunov. 
one of the most intense dudes, one of the most badass wrestlers in the history of NXT. They see him as someone who's going to lead that brand. I don't know when they're going to strap a rocket to him. I don't know how long it's going to take, but he is going to be the face of that brand eventually. And he's just so unbelievably good. And every single match, I just get three or four messages from three or four different people and I say, this kid is special. That kind of stuff. People are going to say that's pedophilia again. I, I really don't care, but that's the truth. That's it. That's the God's on truth. That's that's what's being said about him, and I couldn't be happier for Javon because he's such a talented kid. But and, uh, before you get out of here, too, less fun news to talk about, obviously. But uh, the Drew Gulak stuff—it seemed like he was, I mean, as written off as written off can get. Tony D'Angelo yeah. and the family uh, have taken out two dimes. They they killed pretty deadly to the main roster. Flash Legend had a producer that's still in the trunk of someone's car somewhere or sleeping with the fishes or whatever. Uh, it seems like the follow-up from your report is that there are certainly no creative plans considering what they wrote into today's episode. Just confirmation that that's the case, yeah? Uh, yeah. Th- see, when I asked about this, obviously, th- it was ve- it was very leaning into it. We, we, we kind of all got the message pretty loud and clear. But the reason for the, this is um, there was no there's a directive right now not to mention Drew Gulak. That is something yeah. I can say with absolute certainty. They don't want to bring attention to it. But earlier today it was kind of decided. Look, everyone, everyone knows that's why this is just what I've been told that they realize right. Everyone already knows, or at least everyone kind of in attendance at least is up to speed on it so they decided just to go with this this method i, I was told that he's not going to be back anytime soon if at all so no, it, clearly it, it, no, it's not it, it's he's not obviously looking... dead at the bottom of a river i don't know yeah <laughs> <laughs> he's been murdered therefore but, so, but uh... yeah they, they, they i i don't know how long the family in no court crap catch crew's plans go back i'm trying to figure that out as well whether this was just thrown together as kind of a reason to write drew off and give the but i was told as well that the big the biggest selling point was or the big not the biggest selling point the biggest issue with today or tonight was that they wanted to get the no core crutch crew past this they want to just move on from this they want to just try and keep this faction going because yeah at the end of the day, they have to. They can't just split them up and, and send them their separate ways. They have to try and keep this stable going. And to be honest, I hope they do find a new gear. With it. Maybe add a new member to replace Drew. I don't know, but either way, it's it's just a nasty scenario. Alex, anything that you want to yell at Corey at before he goes? No, I'm gonna yell. I'm I'm not yelling. I'm questioning. I want to know if you know the answer to this. Okay. Spring break again is two weeks, two nights, two separate nights. Yes. They've told us tonight that they are doing both the NXT title, Ilya versus Trick, and the women's title, the triple threat with Roxanne and Lyra and Tater, next week. What the hell is the main event of of Spring Break again night two? I have like, no are idea. Are they setting that up on night one? Have you heard anything about Trick? If Trick wins, he's got to defend it against so-and-so on night two or what? I think that might be the direction. I think you might either one. I think one of the titles will be defended on night two. From what I'm getting at, uh, it, it's hard for me to say to answer your question without like spoiling the show, like in letting no, people no, no, know no, no, what's no. coming next. But I would, I would say that um, we'll know by next week. I feel like we'll know either during next week's show or beforehand. They might announce it beforehand. See, all right. <sighs> I, I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Alex. I can't, I'm no, just trying not to spoil no, 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 it. For no, no, don't, don't spoil um, it. Don't spoil well, it. Just do, here's what I know. Do you know what it is? I don't know specifically, but I. Okay. No, 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 no. Yeah. Yeah. It's fine. <laughs> also, apparently, before you leave, you have to do a good pun. Do you have a uh, good pun? I'm it's not special. a good pun person. I am uh, so bad at puns. My dad makes. You can't be on stream if you can't do I mean, puns. That's bullshit. What are we out oh, cursing? This no, is no, clearly no. within the first five minutes of the show. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> yes, Corey. I have my finger on it. Oh, right back. No, we got to get on with the show. We are twenty-five minutes. I have more in. stuff I... left. For God's sake! Oh, hurry up! <laughs> 
no, this is one of the things we talked about earlier that I was supposed to talk about. So technically, this is your fault as a host. You should have put right. it to me. Um, anyway, so uh, tonight there was someone new uh, producing, and uh, I'll have a full story on this tomorrow. But um, Sean Spears. Sean Spears has started producing matches uh, on the show. He produced both women's matches tonight, which which is a new... Um, obviously, it's the first time he's done it. I, I made sure to double-check. Uh, he did it alongside Johnny Moss, who is a long-time NXT producer. Um, so, yeah, that, I'll have more on that tomorrow, but it is, it's something that I'm, I'm not surprised to see, given the fact that he has a history of coaching beforehand. And, uh, yeah, I... Just for just run through some really quick other backstage notes. The show did fall behind on timing at, during the second and third matches of the show, uh, but they did catch up by the time the steel cage match uh, began, which was obviously good for pacing. Uh, Carmelo Hayes completed several walkthroughs of the long take before his entrance uh, beforehand, which is something that I've been told has been made a common part of these long takes, like Sammy and Jay's on Monday. And uh, finally, little bit of a spoiler here, but I don't really have any way to answer this. Otherwise, uh, Trick Williams is not planned for a call-up anymore. He was being discussed for one, but right now he is currently... Unless there's a big change between now and night one of spring breaking and night one of the draft, Trick will not be going to the main roster. And uh, that, yeah, that's it. So now you can remove me, Kate. Bye, guys. <laughs> I like that he saves the mic drop for the end there, but makes sense. Someone's got to be the face of the company at some point. So we will see how that plays out moving forward. But thank you, Corey, for coming on and sharing some more context about your scoops. Follow yeah. Corey at Corey Brennan FF on X and subscribe to Fightful Select for more great context. Corey, thank you so much. I've got to ask Alex one thing before I go. I thought I was going to ask this. Yes. How do you feel about the referee completely missing the Oh no! <clears throat> we'll get to it. We're gonna get to it. We're gonna get to it. We but will. We will. We will. Alex, I gave you. You know how they give you like the the first hour commercial free. I gave you like right. the first half hour host free. I just. Well, no, I don't know yeah. why I did that. I just decided right. I drive that part of the show. I'm just, sorry. Just, well, that's no, that's good. You're you you interview Corey about all the scoop skis, so that's good. <laughs> uh, last night, JW Pringle sent in a, a chat to be read tonight. I think saying, "Amazing Alex, kill a Kate." I had to miss last week because of work, and I'll miss tomorrow. It's meaning tonight. Because the missus and I are going to NYC, so look at look at the look at Pringle, uh, the big tomato. He says, which is the big not tomato. Good. If I had um, known my brother was going to be there, I would have given him hot places to visit in New York. Yeah, of course. But then uh, they says, please give love to Papa Paul and all the SGS from. I, I love that my Pringle. my dad gets it, but I don't. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks. That's the way it works, right? Um, so uh, fan favorites. We, we also got one from your dad, uh, of course. Paul Elizabeth says, I've heard everything sucks, but definitely not the SGS. The team, Corey, our supermod Louise, nor the chairman of the board, J.W. Pringle. So, Well, we need to have a, a brief discussion because I've decided I have heat with your daughter uh -huh. the same way that I do Birdie. Because mm -hmm. yesterday, Alex, we did our Raw review. Yes. Uh-huh. And you. Yes. Betrayed me. I did not. There's no such thing. I I was. Uh, I, uh, what's I, the What's the name of the show? Sour Craps. And you were reasonable. I was reasonable. Who are I, you? I have to call him as I see him, Kate. I have to call him as I see him, and now I have to call him as I see him. Uh, and you and and I think somehow this rubbed off on you because I know from DMs you didn't hate this episode, so. What is up with that? Yes, but I'm not the sultan of sour like uh, you. Honestly, though, it's 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 because uh, my condition is catching, and you have the worst immune system in the history of mankind. They, that's it. So that's what it is. That's it. That's honestly, it, it is like yeah. weirdly comforting to know that everybody who went to Philly came back just ill. Yeah. Just mm -hmm. ill. Right. Um, so uh, we. This was a not. This was this was not the worst episode of NXT. I'm not. I mean, it like, wasn't. I'm, I'm on so, top of not yeah. the worst episode of Raw, which is, is right. making me fear for my job security. Right. No. Like, listen, we we can figure out ways of nitpicking in a fun way. <laughs> of course, we can. you know, 
so like you know, I mean, if I have to throw on a funny voice, yeah, Who then I can do that. Well, I did pick. Yeah, I know it's weird. You so you know, the spirit will it will continue, but I, the, I always wanted it to be an honest assessment of what I saw on the show. Yeah, it was just really most bad epi- for a long time. Most <laughs> episodes of NXT over the past couple of years have been bad in my assessment. So I talked about that. When things that are what things that are good, I was always honest that I liked. Yes. So Noam Dar versus Dijak was a great match. With a terrible ass finish. Yeah. And that's me being honest about it. It's reasonable. I I love the way Noam Dar worked as a techer in this match versus Dijak. He's Dijak's so got those incredibly hard. long limbs. And um and Noam Dar is faster than him, quicker than him, can get around behind him to get into a sleeper hold. Um, can uh, maneuver himself in the front to do guillotine, grab an arm bar, a, a, a leg lock, whatever. But Dijak is uh, he's too savvy to go down to routine stuff like that. And plus, they wanted to protect him, I guess. So they did the dumbest fin- the dumbest finish I think that I've seen ever until I think they did a dumber one later tonight. So like it's you know it is it, it is what the NXT in the current era is great wrestling up until the final 15 seconds and then crap. It's not as bad as the punching glove to the balls or whatever we got with Joe Gacy. It was not that bad. Um, But very refreshing to have Noam Dar wrestling sans interference for everything but the finish. And then it was dumb interference because Dijak is not that stupid to fall for the distraction that was given. Well, the just. He fell for the distraction. The dis- what is what was the distraction, Kate? Do you remember what the distraction was? It was Oramensa with a mask. Oramensa put on a T-bar mask. Yeah, he's haunted. And 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 and, and that like they don't do a lot on television of acknowledging that Dijak was in fact T-bar. No, he does a like, lot of it online. He does a lot of it online. <laughs> so this is a bridging between the two things. And um, him being pissed at Mun Mensa for wearing his T bar mask. I is, think it was PTSD. Funny, you know what I mean? Okay, cool. But also that—that's how we're gonna have Noam Dar sneak yeah. a win. I know that's how he always sneaks wins, but like that is, just feels really dumb um, to use it in this way. Also, when Corey was talking about Dijak, you talking about Dijak maybe going up, and Corey's like, "No, nah, I don't think so." Tonight, if, if he was, tonight is a great way of him putting over another talent on the way up. Um, because, I mean, it, it did seem to me, absent the context of this match, it did seem to me the plan was, since Dijak didn't get pinned versus Obafemi, we were going to rebuild to a Dijak versus Obafemi one-on-one title match. Um and now with a loss to, to Noam Dar, albeit one via chicanery, like it just feels like, well, now we got to we got to rebuild him some more to get back to this point. So like maybe the thing with Noam Dar is a longer program than I thought they were actually going to do. Or if he was getting called up, this is one of those things where like, oh, you're getting called up, so we got to wrap up things with you on down in NXT fast. So we're gonna use you to give a rub to Noam Dar on the way out, and then you're gonna go up to up there, and because they they have a specific thing they want to do with you here. If they're honestly breaking up, AJ Styles and the Good Brothers and Mia Yim forever. AJ Styles' last run as a heel facing Cody, having a dude like Dijak just being his his Diesel would be not the worst thing in the world. Like, those two guys together would be great. Yeah. Like, I, I don't know how long AJ Styles wants to, wants to keep doing this. He keeps talking about retiring. But for as long as he is, having Dijak behind him would be great. And when he does retire, having Dijak send him out would be a huge rub to Dijak to send him forward with more of the stuff that he's doing. Now, again, will they do this? I don't know. If they don't do it, will I be upset? Yes, but I'll try not to let it make me too mad. 
makes me want to vomit when you do that. <laughs> it's visceral in my gut when you're like, hey, man, it's just the, <laughs> good to them. It's their fault. Because uh, uh, your, your daughter said the sweetest thing in the world to you, you now, yeah. now you've, mm-hmm. you've found mm-hmm. yep. it's unlocked something in you. Yes. Mm-hmm. I can't even be mad at because that's adorable. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, the, the thing with Tychek is like, there are some guys that are they're so valuable it gets in their own it, it it gets in their own way because it gets taken for granted by the bookers sometimes. And I don't actually think that's the case with Dijak in, in NXT. I feel like they know how valuable he is, and that's why he's like the guy before someone faces a champion or he's there to make someone look good. This ending to me smelled like we're getting Dijak and Ora Mensa, maybe Obafemi costs some, I don't know. But, like, uh, this match I really, really liked. Something I loved about Noam Dar in this was so often, and we saw it a little bit, but it's just, like, legs and arms, legs and arms, legs and arms with Techers. Mm. He, especially for the size differential, going for the throat and the head a ton in this, a ton in this, mm. and I really, really liked it. There was a really cool spot where he went for a kick and they both choked each other, and that the David and Goliath look was so great with that. The guillotine from Noam Dar, like just textbook, yeah. so so perfect. But um, also that fisherman buster into the armbar thing was mm-hmm. disgustingly good. Noam Dar is so great, and I I hope that we continue a pattern of just because you have a big personality doesn't mean we have to undercut everything you do in the ring when you're a heel. Like right. having both is great. That's why I'm such a TMDK nerd. Everybody in that faction. Sure has a huge personality and then when they get in the ring it's very easy to take them seriously um so i i really liked a lot of what happens in this match i did not love the t-bar distraction ending but at least it was one that as far as nxt distraction endings go Mm -hmm. (laughs) was not the worst one that we get right Uh and we actually got a clean noam dar match before it it's right until the end yeah yeah Yeah. so Um, I loved the in-ring chemistry between the two of them and just the story of um, we, it just feels like every time we get little tech or big dude, it's got to chop down the tree or got to go for a limb. And I just loved him going for the throat. Like maybe if I cut off his oxygen supply, maybe if I compromise him here, uh, I have a shot at, at beating this guy. I just really loved the story that we got out of this and Dijak just being, and he, he was like, this son of a bitch really keeps coming at me. I got to throw this guy down every single time I get an opportunity to really, really fun match. T-bar mask at the end. Woof. Uh, I'm sure that means we're getting Dijak and Oramenza at some point. Uh, but if they want to run Dijak and Noam Dar again, please do. If they want to send up Dijak to the main roster, I mean, whatever brand he wants to ratio, I think he deserves to at this point. He's he's really just shown so much value, and I I hope that um, they let him live up to his ceiling because I I just think he's excellent at this. Yeah. Um. So. Yeah, we'll we'll, we'll we will find out more about what they have planned for Noam Dar. I mean, honestly, they could just run this back again. Dijak and be pissed, and we run this back. Night Jack sure. versus Noam Dar. Night two of spring break again. That'd be a fun match. Dijak gets his win back. We move on or whatever. Who who knows? But like, there's there's other stuff to do here. Um, uh, I wanted to mention that. Uh, a, it's fashion puns because of the segment with uh, Ariana puns. Venti fashion and puns. Georgiana fashion Dolan. Um, but uh, for fashion puns, fashion clothes puns. So uh, it doesn't have to be just like people are doing fantastic ones. I'm going to read a few of them right now. Um, but uh, just pieces of clothing, if you can't think of life. If you're not a fashionista, you don't know, like, you know, different things, different brands or whatever. Just clothing. Just clothing clothes. will also... Clothing will also accept as well. By the way, I came up with immediately in the DMs, in the group chat, the best. It's going to be hard for you to beat it. I'm not going to say what it is because I honestly wonder if anybody else is going to come up with with it themselves. And if you do, then I will give you full credit because you will have come up with it independently. So, so, um, the other thing. Is last night uh, people decided in the in the chat 
that they wanted to outfit an SGS clubhouse. You know how the Judgment Day have their own clubhouse with a dartboard that is three feet in front of you. Like, um, yeah. I want another bullseye. I don't know how I'm so good at this. Oh my god. Um, they have a, like a couch and some posters. So the question was, what would you say would be in the SGS clubhouse? So correct. The Electric Mayhem has some ideas. I'm going to read those. Oh, right okay. Now. A no Jericho's allowed sign on the door. Of course, he would probably trademark it. A TV set up correctly so you could watch it like this from the side. The Tekkers corner, just a corner dedicated to pictures and info on Tekkers. A pun of the week sign. Treat jar for Daphne and all the sour pups. Uh, a small table for Alex to carry around. That's a given. <laughs> And this is my favorite. And honestly, it's something I actually now I really need to ha make happen. A foosball table with all the players on the table painted as various impressions and characters. Linda and Sheila are the goalies. Wouldn't that be cool? I love that. Even if it's even if it's a tabletop one. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. We need it. I need it. Um, so we need chewy banana that's, runs as well. That's that. That's good. Um, so a, a couple of a couple of fashion puns to get you uh, started. Okay. Um, ENR says, "Mr. Mayhem wardrobe." <laughs> that's excellent. Um, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Photo says, "Louis Vuittonka." <laughs> <laughs> that's so good. Mm -hmm. Uh, and Lieutenant Colonel Photo also says the dark deorder. That's really Jim good. Deorder. Join Very the good. dark deorder. We have we have a lot of good ones here. We'll get, we'll we'll read we'll read them uh, a little later. <sighs> Ilya and talking to Ava, and they was like, you know what? I think it's not fair that Trick has to face Carmelo in a steel cage match this week, and you're off, and you both have to wrestle each other next week. And uh, Hilly is like, you are the GM. Give me someone to do fight. And she's like, okay. Uh, yeah, sounds good. Um, you, you, you can pick your own. And, uh, and he, he goes, I welcome the challenge. And I'm like, great. I can't wait to see the segment where he comes up to Javon Evans and says, I watched your match last week. It really impressed me. She says, I want you to pick your own challenger. And then later, it was just an open challenge, like a yeah. literal free-for-all. I wanted to see him pick Javon Evans, and Javon Evans go, me? You, you want to face me? It's like, don't you want the title opportunity? Yeah. Then I will see you in the ring. And Javon Evans looking around at everybody else in the locker room, and the heels are pissed at him, and the old babyface was like, this is amazing. What a cool opportunity. It was like, I gotta go. I gotta go warm up. Like, and let him be that kid who is just the most excited, but also like, I just got here, and I don't. I'm 19 years old, and that dude hits really hard, and this is really exciting. No, like, hold on. <laughs> let him be that character, as opposed. I know I liked him running down to the ring from backward, from behind the thing, and that was fun too. But they specifically told Ilya Dragunov, "Pick your own challenger." And then there was just an open challenge. I was like, that's that's false advertising. What I like about this is it is consistent with the fact that open challenges operate in 745 different ways. That, that is also true. So it, it does remain absolutely chaotic with how open challenges work in NXT. There might be a brawl backstage and it's okay. just whoever gets to the ring first. I guess Ilya told Ava to tell the locker room that if they wanted to meet him, wanted to meet him they wanted him to meet him in the ring. All right, fine. Okay, cool. But like, also, she was like, pick someone, and he was like, I pick Nick everyone. Was like, no, <laughs> I pick you everybody. Tell them all to meet me in the ring. Like, you know, it's not. No, you know what? Actually, I take it back. It's perfect. <laughs> him um, being like, I will fight literally everyone is perfect yes, for him. Give me, give them all of them. Let's Zero go. notes, um, no stars, all the stars. Okay. Every so often, a talent in NXT, especially these past few years, will do something that makes me sit up, literally sit up on my couch and go, what? Where, where has this been? 
it's it's moves in the ring sometimes. Sometimes it's like a promo in the ring, whatever. You just um, unlock something. Yeah. You, so, something clicked. And I, I certainly before this last couple of months, if you had told if you had told me one day Tatum Paxley is going to do something that's going to make you sit up on your couch and go, where has this been? All of a sudden, her ceiling just went up 30 floors from one vignette incredibly produced, but more than that, impeccably acted. As a guy who acted for 15 years on stage and also taught acting for several years, there's a there's a level of just speaking naturally when you're reading li- when you are re- reciting lines from a script that is hard for a lot of people to manage. Most wrestlers never get it. Most of them, seventy percent of them, never really sound like a person talking <laughs> when they are saying the lines of a promo. And this was this just unlocked something in her the 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 naturalism with which she gave all of these lines uh like the the backstory of i i always wanted to fit in i did i wanted i wanted to be a good girl but nobody really wanted to play with me um and then i realized that it wasn't the 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 girls that i wanted to hang out with it was the stuff that they had this thing and then she specifically says I she attached herself to the NXT Women's Championship. Eventually, it wasn't like she's been doing this the whole time, but she realized around the time that Lyra became champion, I want this. And as long as Lyra has it, then I must protect Lyra because she is the one who has the thing. But when she loses the thing, well, then she's dead to me. I don't care about her. I care about that. Now, they appear to be doing the thing. Well, now that's all gone. And all I want is that title for myself. And what I wanted them to keep doing this a little while longer and her being like, now Roxanne is the one I must protect at all costs. And Roxanne to be like, cool, whatever. That's fine. Just don't get in my way. But if you want to hurt all the people I'm going to be facing, that's groovy. Like, I thought there would be more to it than that. But the problem is, is that the, the quibbles I have with the character thing, honestly, like, I'm I'm obsessed with the title itself, is an interesting angle. But it it you can't ret- retcon it too far back or it makes zero sense. However, it was how she delivered the lines just the the look on her face, the, her eyes, everything that she was doing was amazing to me. And I have literally never seen anything that she's done. Like this this kind of stuff talking, the, her whole stuff with Lyra, it never felt real. This felt real. Now, again, there's the oppor- there's the possibility that I'll she'll never reach this level again with me. But there is something, especially when you're doing spooky stuff, where you really have to commit and not and not overplay it. Because when you overplay it, then it becomes tedious to watch. Like, I, oh, the belt is my precious, and I have to protect Lyra at all costs. Like, too many people do the spooky stuff and they go over the top with it. It's so much more spooky. When you're when you bring it down and you just lock it's eyes, so much more. It, it was fantastic, uh, honestly. I'm it, I'm not saying I want her to win the title next week, but if they're starting a new spooky faction on the main roster with Bo Dallas coming back, the, these new um, QR codes and stuff, apparently. Rowan has, like- has pulled out of a b- bunch of indie, indie dates because he's no longer available. If they're starting a whole new faction, like she's made for it. I know Alexa Bliss loves doing it, but she well, also overplayed the little girl stuff to a, to a point that it didn't feel real for a lot of it. Whatever Tatum is doing, like it's really good. I mean, consider where she might be in four to eight months, even, 
if she keeps doing this kind of stuff. I was really impressed with this vignette. Really impressed with it. It felt way more like Nikki Cross than Alexa Bliss to me. And yeah. that's not a knock on Alexa Bliss. She did what she did very well for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> it was the creative team that screwed the pooch on that. But... Yeah, yeah. No, the, the doll thing ru ruined a lot of it. Yeah, well, and then and then they didn't decide when she came back. Like, they, they never actually picked a lane with her. Um, somebody had reposted the clip with Becky when she was on her The Man Run and Nikki, where Becky was, like, pointing out that Nikki was a spooky little weirdo, as people that are grounded in reality should. Mm -hmm. And Nikki was just like, did the play with me thing. Mm -hmm. And um, it was so effective because... Um, it, it, you you bought it. You just bought that she like she didn't really care about the title. She just wanted to, to mess with Becky. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, what I liked about this was I've met somebody that's a little off kilter. I know what it's like to covet something that someone has, um, right. not obsessively, but right. I know what it's like to be jealous of a thing. Um, yeah. I don't know what it's like to have people signing a contract and to crawl under a table because that's Mm -hmm. insane and stupid right, right so um the benefit of multiple takes the benefit of high production yes i think it's much easier to be a natural talker when you're given something that is um in the sphere of reality and then you can take it out of reality to whatever extent that you need to mm -hmm. this was excellent we saw so many refreshing production changes on the main roster yesterday was like OMG, the best thing I ever saw was Sami Zayn. I can't. Like, I'll get emotional talking about it right. again because it was so special how production can uplift something. Very nice to see. We were saying it felt like we had two brands, right? That we had, like, cheesy backstage mm -hmm. after school special, and then we had epic production for Ilya and Tony Dia. We were like, what are we yeah. watching? Yeah. Uh, this feels like high quality, deserves to be on my television stuff. And it does kind of suck that we're getting a Tatum Paxley origin story now. It feels like we were owed right. well, this weeks, I, weeks ago. I appreciate them doing honestly a pretty good job of retconning it. They Not did. retconning it, but 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 explaining it afterwards doing a hindsight thing is so much better than not doing it at all which is what they had been doing for the last several years and and when they showed her like hey no no it's 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 okay um i don't need your help anymore i'm good are you though throwing her into the steps it's not yours anymore it doesn't belong to you when you see it now in this context it fully makes sense and good it, you should be at least i should i should at least see now that it looks like you might have been planning this at least six weeks ago and that's good this feels like a i'm sure it's a jeremy borash vignette like it's it's his kind of deal he's working in nxt this is some really good stuff this was great I like it. this was yeah. really really great and it um this is oh god i hate to like always hammer this home but character versus gimmick right this is that. It felt very gimmicky up until now, and now it feels like a character that yep. leans gimmicky, and I appreciate that so much, because yep. uh, otherwise I'm just watching someone yeah. feel like they're Halloween character instead. So I'm, I'm with you. This was Aces. Mm -hmm. It makes me very uncomfortable how much yep. how much we, we've been liking some right. stuff. Um, Jim Beard says... Saw Tatum's clip on Twitter, got a lot of Daphne vibes from her in all the good ways. That is a great, that's a great comparison. Rest in peace. Mm -hmm. Not my dog. Jambird, Dog's fine. Jambird also says, if they do it right, if or when Tatum wins the title, her obsession with it could be Champa and Goldie levels of good. I saw a lot of Goldie comparisons. A lot you know? of Goldie comparisons online, and I love that. That is that that will be really great. Um, I, honestly, um, I I don't know how far she's come in the ring since, since the times when she was teaming with Ivy Nile. Um, so we'll see. How next would we week. know? <laughs> how would we know? Um, Lola Vice defeated Sol Ruka because Blair Davenport ran in and like did a little wonky thing with the top rope. Crucially, before Soul tried to do a cartwheel on it, not as she was doing it. 
So hers like, oh no, the 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 rope is no longer jiggling. I must fall. Um, is was a weird way to end it. But Soul and and La and Lola were having a good match. They were until that point. Again, really good wrestling up until the final fifteen seconds of the match. It's just it's their speciality. Um, this is the this is of course um, like is uh, um, Jambeard says. Wait, wait, wait! A ref missed something tonight during the match. Angel Hernandez has a bright future as a ref in WWE. <laughs> Luis wanted to know what referee spot was he was he uh, uh, mad about? Was uh, Corey wanted to test my how mad I was about it? Honestly, the fact that Blair never came into contact with Sol Ruka, just got up on the apron and then went wobble wobble with the top rope, and that was it. Maybe go okay. I guess the ref wouldn't like disqualify Lola for that. So that was kind of weird, but the ref was looking right at it, like, what are you doing? And then and Sol Ruka was like, and then was like, oh, okay, it's over now. You but know, for someone who's we, he, so great at catching a wave, mm -hmm, it feels like a jiggly see. rope should not yeah. be the thing that takes no, her it out. Be. I, I also, here's one of those things. Again, stuff that I see, little isolated moments that go make me go, okay, all of a sudden your ceiling went up a couple of floors. Sol Ruka's cell of the kick from Lola Vice. When you when you can make me think you shoot got knocked out because you don't just fall the way a wrestler falls, you go her she just her legs just stopped, her legs ceased to exist, her butt met the floor, she slumped over. Great, an Dead amazing weight. sell of that kick, so good, and she sold it all the way through the the pin where she was completely just nothing. That I love awesome. cells like that. If you make me love feel it. like it looks like someone love out it. went out in an MMA fight or whatever, I love that. Her selling is quite good. Yeah, quite good. It's, it's better and better. But I will always remember that sell of that kick. Like that's one of those things I'll go like, okay, but that's that's a fantastic uh, um, example of what to do to to make yourself stand out even in a loss. If you um, showed this to somebody that doesn't watch wrestling regularly. They would be like, "Oh my God, that girl really got knocked out." Yeah, yeah. like if my mom had seen that, yeah, yeah. she would have been like, because she was convinced every other chair shot and the bloodline rules thing was real. Like yeah. she, you, it, mm -hmm. it made Lola Vice look so good. And if you don't watch wrestling, you're like, "Holy shit, her kick really knocked that person out." But when you do yeah. know wrestling, you're like, "What a sell!" So good on her, good on her. And uh, I will say this match did get away from, um, and I think partly because Lola Vice is great. This got away from you're a surfer with a cool finish. Like we got yeah. to see, we're seeing other stuff from Sol Ruka that I want to see. So yeah, good things there too. Um, so Natalia comes on the screen having Both. recorded this, but um, but they're using it as though she is broken in live via satellite. I hate that shit so much. I hate when they Especially do that so much. As someone that didn't watch during the Attitude Era when that got popularized, it is the most like. And, well, out of context, jarring thing in the world. And she <laughs> does, she does the gender hall memorial. Hey, hey, up here, up here, Lola. Jesus. Um, and but she says, uh, I want to challenge you to a match doing your type of stuff because uh, I want to prove that I'm I am the boat. So she challenges her to an NXT Underground match. Yes, yeah, she does. And I'm like. We can't have Shayna Baszler do that with somebody. If they're going to bring somebody from the main roster, it's going to be solid, but no emotion. Natalia, like, there's no fire in Natalia's game. I'm sorry, there ain't. Like, she's really, she's incredibly solid. She's a consummate technical professional. She'll never make a mistake, and she'll never make me feel anything when I watch her. I'm sorry, she has yet to do that. So Lola Vice beating her, she must beat her because what are we doing if that doesn't happen? But she's going to beat Natalia. That's good. That's a feather in her cap. Beating Natalia, good. Sure. Also, later they interview Carmen um, Petrovich, uh, who says she's going to be in Natty's corner for that match. And then Lola walks up and says, just wait till you see who I have in my corner. And I'm like, it's not going to be anybody impressive. It's just going to be some some other girl from the main roster who doesn't yeah. like Natalia. It's, if it's Shayna Baszler, I guess that could be good. If it's like Shayna, actually that have rule. that would be good. But yeah, uh, yeah. 
shout out to her interview with Sean, Natalia's interview with Sean, where she said she wanted to do something like blood sport. And this good is, for her. Yeah, this is as close as it's gonna get under the yeah. WWE proper umbrella. Yeah. Um, great interview. Go go check that out. Um I I'm intrigued because I, I like Natalia a little bit more than you. I completely get your disconnect with her. But um I'm I think she if outside of the story, what we're doing is taking people's temperature on how ready they sure. are, right? Sure. She's like the perfect person for that piece of it. And Lola is someone that I just feel like she really kind of snuck up on me. And then she's been like one of my favorites since she did. Mm -hmm. Like she's, yeah. she has a very interesting and unique style about her and she gets the character aspect extremely well. So I'm excited for that. Um, I'm also like, what are we doing with this mid card title here in NXT? Like they just announced it. They say there's going to be a tournament for it. They have not said when that tournament will be. That's will the, be. the draft it, piece of this is making me curious. Yeah. It feels like they won't decide that until after the draft when it will start. And I feel like it probably culminates at battleground, which is the first weekend of eight of June. So okay. that tournament's not starting for a while. For a little bit. They just, yeah. they just announced that the tournament will be a thing. So, yeah, I guess we'll see. It it's very point. funny. I, I don't think they're doing this because you have to plan titles so far in advance and whatever. But it was almost like, as someone that covers ROH, it's like, oh, you had a great mid-card title tournament on your developmental brand? So are we. But Alex, I got to say. Yeah, what's that? Sometimes. Mm -hmm. It's not always so easy to get called up. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. sometimes you're not really going up as much as you wish you were and you might need a little help oh. to get elevated in such oh, a way. Oh, I see. Yeah. Um, and there, there are resources out there and uh, Sean Ross X here to tell you all about them. Is your sex life stuck in developmental? Well, get ready for a call up with bluechew.com and the code FIFL. Same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis, but how about this? No awkward in-person visits, no trips to the pharmacy. It ships straight to your door in a discreet package. But let me tell you, your package is not gonna be discreet when you use Blue Chew and the code Fightful. It helps give you that confidence, that performance to take you straight to the main event, if you know what I'm saying. When approved online by one of our physicians, it just arrives straight to your door. You're not going to have people nosing around with what you're doing. And right now, you get your first shipment free when you use the code FIGHTFUL. Go straight to the top. If you know what I mean. Memorable performance, high spot, you know, whatever other innu innuendos you can think of, bluechew.com and the code FIGHTFUL. There you go. Bluetooth.com code fightful. Uh -huh. To get called up, well, you well, get it. So what you're what you're saying is, if you want your penis on the main roster, use Bluetooth. That's exactly what okay, I'm saying. Good. I was I was yeah, confused. But... Uh, you didn't uh, you weren't specific enough about it. Um, Rich Rich Holland is spotted choking Joaquin Wild via NXT Anonymous, and when I say spotted. I mean, also, he did it literally six inches in front of the the general manager's face, who was like, hey, you should probably stop that. She has the power to, like, punish him and won't do it. Like, it is very funny. Um, she was using her Jonathan discretion. Uh, she was, apparently. Uh, apparently, you are allowed to choke people backstage? I was thought, I was, I, 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 have, I had heard that apparently wrestling companies frowned upon that, but apparently they don't, so. It's, uh, we'll see. Case by case basis. <laughs> Either way, we got the footage immediately this time, so there's no like, we there's no discord. We did. We did. Um, uh, Ridge Ridge Holland um, faced Joaquin Wild. Um, Joaquin Wild was game, but uh, he did. There was something that uh, that I had never seen before, and I can't believe I had never seen it before because it it's such a perfect counter to a thing literally everybody does now a suicide dive into the just slam. reversed into a power slam like like an old like a Randy Orton style dust Dustin Rhodes style power slam where like he's coming at you you just kind of wait for him duck a little bit step into it onto his back onto the outside 
I've never seen anybody do that before. And I'm like, I've never even thought anyone should do it. And now it's the most obvious counter to a to a move literally everyone attempts twice a match. Now, now that it's been done once, everyone who's the right size to be able to do that counter should do it every time somebody attempts a suicide dive, especially suicide running gentle pushes. Like there's a bunch <laughs> of people who don't do real diving. They're like, just run out and they kind of put their hands in front of them and go, nah. Not a suicide like, if, gentle push. For, the, for a long time, Seth Rollins was doing suicide running gentle he, push. He, like, he, he kind of was. He would just he push, 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 put his hand in front of his thing and go, nah. And I would have to like sell it. Um, How much so, would yeah. you love if somebody did that? To, if, like Miro did that to Darby Allen, that would be your the pinnacle of your That's life. The best. Best thing about with Darby Allen is literally everybody on the roster can do it to him because he's so tiny. He's so tiny, and he yeah. does a suicide dive. Well, I think the problem suicide. is you got to do the, the timing's got to be different for him. It was perfect. He tonight. does do it so fast that you got the timing's got to change. You know what I mean? Your your regular counter timing isn't going to work properly. Maybe someone can ask Darby Allen later because we haven't Maybe heard that impression could. in a while. But I don't. I, don't, I, don't uh, I really that was that was my favorite thing of the match and it was probably the best i have liked ridge holland uh and i, I think joaquin was just a, a fantastic opponent for him just really good chemistry tonight that spot though was the thing i remember about it the most um because it not only was incredibly clever but it was also the most storytelling move of the match like to me that said like i i could just let this guy fly by me I could take the hit or I could do the most violent thing possible, which is who Ridge Holland is. And he he's extremely violent and a terrible retirer. He's really right. bad at retiring. Right. That's what we know about Ridge Holland. So mm -hmm. I also liked that not only for the, the innovative move that it was, but for the storytelling aspect that it had with it. Um, and then the finish on this match, not bad considering how many bad finishes that we got as well. So, mm -hmm. um, I, this was the most I've liked out of the Ridge Holland stuff. Uh, but that spot was one of those. We've talked about it before. The first, yep. I can tell you the first time I had that moment as a wrestling fan. Because I started watching in 09. When it was Jericho and Punk at WrestleMania. Um, two of your favorites, I know. But at, oh, yeah. <laughs> at Mania. Love their work, both of them, equally. Both of them, you love those guys. Um, he had him... In the, I almost said Cobra Clutch. What is it? They had a condom vice. Uh, and Jericho just kicked him. And you saw Punk react in real time. Covered it up because he was in a wrestling match. But he had one of those, like, why the hell hasn't anybody countered this like that before? Like, you read it on his face for a split second. And it was the first time I recognized that as a fan. I'll never forget it. Because now yeah. I've seen it happen multiple times. I've seen it. I saw it happen with Danielson and ZSJ. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, because they're just really clever counters. This was one of those ones to me where, to your point, like, if you're a wrestler, you now have to acknowledge that that counter is a possibility. Because right, yeah. It's such a common move, yeah. and it's such a great counter. Everybody Another one, it. yeah. Another one I saw um, uh, that um, years ago that, I mean, I, I hadn't seen anybody do it before. I don't know if people were doing it in TNA. But AJ Styles' calf crusher. When Moxley was in it, he just reached up and hooked him around the throat and smashed his head into the canvas a bunch of times. And then everybody did it to AJ. And people don't do it to AJ anymore. But for a while, like in 2017, anyone who he put that calf crusher on, he was getting his head slammed into yep. the mat. And I feel like that's that's good that people are learning. Um, Jam Beard says that thanks, Alex. Now I want to see Samoa Joe power slam Darby, and the speed of that power slam would be 55 miles per hour. The problem is that's the thing that would actually take Darby out, not diving yeah. through glass from ladders, yeah. not any no, of the crazy not literally stuff. Literally falling does. off of Mount Everest. No, not that. No, that would never um, do it. That um, Samoa Joe would do that. <laughs> we talked last night about how Andrade is now doing Angelo Dawkins setup move. Definitely as a not finisher. Angelo Parker. Um, yes. Um, and what happened to the hammerlock DDT? Well, apparently Ridge Holland saw that Andrade wasn't using it anymore and says, Oh, like, I'll, I'll, I'll take that. And yeah. now, now, 
Now he's now he's doing that. And I'm like, yeah, but Andrade does it better. Can Andrade we just does it back to Andrade very and, uh, well. All right, so that's fine. Um, but I also Sean like Pierce, people should have multiple finishers. Well, yes, sure. Um, uh, so he, um, Son Spears was out there watching for most of the match, didn't get involved, and Ridge like kind of just brushed past him and Samoa, uh, Samoa, wow, Samoa Joe's Sean, 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 Sean Spears just kind of smiled to himself. So, like, it looks like you know, we'll see what happens out of this. But Ridge Holland retired for all of 45 minutes. Um, so that is so wrestling. That's um, so wrestling. Uh, so anyway, uh, Lu- Lu- Luis lets me know that no one from TNA reversed AJ's calf crusher. To be fair, he emphasized the move only on his 2014 to 2016 run in, in uh, New Japan and ROH. So maybe fair enough. Um, Tony Angelo is back, and uh, back from Boca in the best suit ever. <laughs> yes. Um, and, um, uh, <laughs> apparently he, he had Drew Gulak killed. Um, they're giving a, giving a, a, a you know, um, like, you know, big Ange is the future women's division. I got my boys, uh, Luca and Stax. Uh, I, I lost Jillia Dragunov. That was a hell of a fight, blah, blah, blah. And immediately interrupted by no quarter catch crew. Um, and uh, and Charlie Dempsey and and Charlie Dempsey and um, Damon Kemp went to the same school of standing with one foot forward and the other one back <laughs> and like they teach you that in Texas. I need <laughs> I need to show both of my nipples to the hard cam, otherwise it's not really. And I don't need to do that, Bellas. You really don't need to do that. It was very awkward. <laughs> um, a lot of people in NXT have been instructed that they can't stand full profile. And you totally can watch the main roster. The reason I know they've been instructed to, to do this is because no one does this naturally. You have to be told, cheat out a little bit so that everyone can see everything. And you don't. Like, there are multiple camera angles. We'll figure it out. We just want to see people talk to each other. We don't they need to see like the whole... When I was a little girl and you played Barbies, like mm-hmm. how they had, like, you would have to... Let's twist them at the waist and then they would have like their joints or whatever um it looks like they're getting arranged that way like lyra valkyria took that same right. direction um yeah both of yeah. these guys um so anyway this is how i talk to people but uh says watch um uh is a um uh tony blah 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 uh says charlie dempsey whatever i remember he says and then tony says something like hey don't let me don't because we took care of that little problem you had. Uh, don't think you can come out here and interrupt me. It's like, well, yeah, little problem. I don't know if it, if you are talking about uh, how you had uh, somebody who will remain nameless murdered and sent to the bottom of the St. John's River in Jacksonville, um, uh, whose name is Drew Gulak. Um, I don't. Are you a cop? Because legally, you have to tell me if you are. Like, it was very awkward how they were trying to, like, get around allowing it. And then Stax is like, hey, he said no specifics. He's like, yes, I was not being specific about the friend of ours who used to be seen with us and now is no longer seen with us. And the reason is because we asked you to kill him for us. I'm not saying his name, Drew Gulak. I'm not saying his name at all. Um, but everyone knows now that you murdered our our f- former friend, for the good of the business, they said, which is just like wow, that is persona non grata. Um, but then he's then they say, like, hey, by the way, you still owe us payment for that. And um, and they go, When when do we say we're ever gonna pay you? We're not gonna pay you. And then Luca goes, Your account is in a arrears with Mr. D'Angelo, and we'll be collecting soon. And I was like, okay, I like I like Lusa. Luca doesn't need the Brooklyn accent. Yes, he does. He, he so does. He, and if he's if he's gonna say things like your account is in arrears, like that's that's fine. I don't mind that at all. Um, so I um I I I thought this is very fun. Um <laughs> uh and then it just led to a brawl, and we're getting a six man next week on spring break again night one and eventually we're getting tony d'angelo winning the the heritage cup um, assuming he doesn't get called uh, up yeah assuming he doesn't get called up um 
man, I just there's so much more stuff that he could do in, in NXT than he could do on the main roster. I don't know. What I know, but I kind of want him to visit that Legato feud again. I mean, so, yeah, but I just feel like he'd be they were just like, hey, here's a team. Here's basically um the hey, three guys and a girl. Yeah. I mean, they're not they're not bringing up everybody. There's no way Crucifino and Big Ange go up. I'm, they're just not ready yet. They haven't had enough Big time Ange on is TV. The most ready. I don't care what anybody says. Like she's she's a fun character, but she ain't. She's like we saw one match. Like she ain't ready yet. That's so perfect. and Luke Crucifino is is better than I thought he was, but I don't. He hasn't done a a lot of. Maybe no, they need reps. As, as a they trio. Stax is fine. Mm -hmm. Tony D's ready, but I feel like they're gonna like. Hey, look who it is! It's the Goombas, and they're just gonna lose to like literally everybody. I think it's I. If I were them. And they always do what I think they should do. <laughs> Good one, Kate. Mm -hmm. uh, it's worth waiting for the whole act to be seasoned enough to get called up. Because I, I actually think it's something that's really I think so, too. Because Alex, Tony D came out tonight as a mobster who is a babyface, I think. And uh, mm -hmm. as a babyface is collecting debts from people, which kind of rules because I never thought about this. Yeah. They're kind of right. Mm -hmm. If you make an agreement. You owe us money. You owe us money. You didn't hold up your end of the bargain. I was true to my word. Right. Is like a very interesting face uh -huh. thing to do. Yes. Uh, I want to see where that goes really bad. Because that's mm -hmm. like, that's actually very interesting to me. Of yeah. like, I live a life of crime, but it's a crime where I'm true to my word and therefore I'm a face is very, very, right. very interesting. I mean, to me. at, at, the, at the very least, he's full tweener. There's no heel, there's yes. nothing heel about him. You know what I mean? Yes. He's, we, but he we, came we, out tonight and like put over like, his like, back and, like, and the Ilya Dragunov was like, we had a good match. Like, that's baby face yeah. stuff. If you watch The Sopranos, who's the protagonist of The Sopranos? It's Tony Soprano. He's, <laughs> he's the guy that we root for in The Sopranos. Even though he's a bad guy, you know what I mean. Like that's that's what they're doing with this, and that's honestly what they should be doing it. Um, uh, so I I thought I thought this was was good. I like the brawl afterwards. I do think. Listen, I mean, obviously, it it's right to at least take him off TV for a very long time, if not outright get rid of any of that for the yeah. However, he was undoubtedly the leader of this faction that you built around him teaching all the other guys what to do. And without him, they feel, I think Charlie Dempsey's really, really good, but he does not feel like the leader of a faction guy. No, he feels, no, no. He feels, he doesn't feel like that yet. So it feels like the faction is kind of rudderless and we don't know what to do with them. And this feels like a thing we're going to do where we put the Heritage Cup with D'Angelo for a while because a that's fun and we could write some cool stuff with that and him like putting it in a trophy case in the restaurant you know like or eating spaghetti out of it i don't know like there's stuff that we could do with it like big book of the beppo style where it's like giant bowls of spaghetti and one of them has like family style um i think that they might do that and then okay now that we've gotten you out of that picture we can develop your character outside of that and get you back there in a few months. You know what I mean? Develop sure. Charlie Dempsey as the guy who leads the faction, maybe add some people to it, whatever. You know what I mean? Or like, they I mean, they don't grow on trees, but find a tecker with some Riz and throw him in there. Who's mm -hmm. been doing this for more than such right. a short time. You know, um, you know, who, would be, you know who would be, honestly be great and nobody would think about it and they'd have to do a hell of a lot to get him there? But a guy who'd be great leading a faction like this because I do think he actually would surprise a lot of people with how good a technical wrestler he is, and he could talk, is Duke Hudson. Duke Hudson, like, breaking away from this thing, turning, finally, finally turning heel on Andre Chase, and starting his own school of wrestling, a real wrestling school, and just basically taking over No Quarter Catch Crew, and talking for all of them, and being a bruiser, who throws big elbows and can chuck people, but also if you need him to put you in a friggin' leg lock, he'll do it too. Like, he, Yo. he, he could do it. 
I'm saying he's wasted as the dude who carries around a novelty trophy and has a has a a, a, a headband and he's just there with Andre Chase because he's such a good promo and never gets to cut him. Man, so. sometimes when you book wrestling that isn't fixing things, like just because it's bad. <laughs> <laughs> that in rules. Because the other thing is. Respectfully, Duke Hudson, face card. Like everybody at TMDK, yeah. by the way. Yeah. Another TMDK yeah. alum. Yeah. Um, and he's like tall and he's a big dude and he's so natural and charismatic. And you're right. His foundation for that would be so good. Mm-hmm. Oh my God, I love that idea. And not just because Duke Hudson's like my fave, but like... Mm-hmm. I'm in. You're, you're... I'm also, in. Lu- Luis... Problem has a much more practical thing, which is just rehire Timothy Thatcher. Like he was. I mean, he's all the way in England, though, where he's from. But like, I'm sure he would move back to the states if they asked him to. Um, And uh, (laughs) back across the pond, because he was literally doing the gimmick of "I will teach you how to stretch people out and wreck their limbs and stuff." He's he's very good at this. He's he's a he's a different kind of promo. Like it's it's like rough. And um, you British. don't really know what he's going to say. Um, it's amazing how he's British, but sounds like he's from America. It's crazy. It's wild that he's he such a good mimic. Like that. Yeah. It's anyway. Crazy. Um, Corey uh, on Twitter regarding Gulak says, while asking about Drew Gulak, was written, how, how he was written off NXT, uh, Corey says, I've been told that Drew Gulak won't be back for a while, if at all. So yeah. there you go. Story tracks. Um, uh, Will Chisholm says Tony D kills more wrestlers than TNA does. Okay, we we do have to talk about this because Lash Legends producer, mm-hmm. pretty deadly, got killed to the main roster. Yeah, uh, two dimes, and now Drew Gulak. Like, mm-hmm. he's he's taking out a lot of people, mm-hmm. Alex. Right. Yeah, I feel like this is going very under the radar. He's a very good mob boss. Mm-hmm. Just saying. Yes. Um, Watch back. Yeah. I yeah I, I agree. Um. So, okay, hold on. So I'm looking here at a at a map of Orlando. There are a lot of bodies of water, like lakes and stuff, but no real rivers. So I, I was, I said, well, the, the Hudson River runs from Chicago to Florida. But I, I maybe it's it, maybe it's it, maybe it's one of these lakes that all these bridges run over. But there's no rivers, not really in in the Orlando area. Um, but I said St. John's River because it's in Jacksonville, which is not too far away, and it leads out to the sea, which is probably a good thing. Um, so uh, maybe it's not the St. John's River. I just couldn't think of any of the lakes. Um, ENR says, why does the Jacksonville PD not investigate all these killings done on TV? I'm just curious. It would be the Orlando PD, but I believe that, like the Vatican, the the performance center in NXT is like it has its own governing body. And people, because the Vatican exists within Italy, but the Italian authorities have no, they have no jurisdiction there. That's basically like the PC, which extends past the parking lot, that it has its own governing body. And Mm -hmm. actual Orlando can't do anything about it. We're sorry. So I was going to say that they're with Tony D specifically, like maybe they're in bed with the cops a little bit. Um, uh, remember how I had a great idea? Well, Jambeard has a terrible one. I normally dislike Truth's comedy, but the family having a feud with Awesome Truth just for our Truth and Tony D to promo together. That's a, that's a, that's a, that, that, that will kill me. I, I, I am trying, I am story. trying to lower, I am trying to lower my blood pressure and, 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 and reduce the idea, the odds of me having an aneurysm on air and having our Truth and Tony D on this would, would kill me instantaneously. Um, <clears throat> Uh, Will Chisholm says Charlie should have uh, gave a look and said, hey, "Look here, sunshine, we're not paying you." <laughs> so. I mean, you could also just have William Regal step in and be like, "You need guidance." You honestly, really could, really could. I love um, your Ducatson idea. It's so good. stop. See, this is the problem. See, now sometimes the things that I say now are going to get into your brain, and when they and when, not if, when they don't do them, it's going to make you sad. Yeah, but I won't throw a nutty about it. Good. Um, Jam Beard says Kate with the hair up and ready to square up. You just like oh, you just, you just, you just, you just, you just whole thing. 
I did. Awesome. I miss her. Yeah. I love Sonia. Um, so Ilya comes out. He's going to have an open challenge, and the entire roster runs down to the to, to ringside down the ramp. But Javon Evans comes down the steps behind uh, the announce table, jumps over everything, gets into the ring, and jumps springboards over Ilya, turning in midair to face him, which was an awesome moment. Bananas. And it was six, it was six minutes of a fantastic sprint. When the I saw the lighting like, lariats the, was the, insane. Javon Evans versus Ilya Dragunov. I got really excited. And then in the spoilers pre presented um, uh, by Corey Brennan on Fight for Select, it says the match was scheduled for one segment. And I was like, oh, man, they can't do anything in one segment. Sure can. Well, apparently in a Javon Evans match, you can just have him go full friggin' sprint. Um, and uh, Ilya Dragunov can keep up with him. Uh, and they can collide and do great things. And then uh, Torpedo Moscow wins it in six minutes. And it's great. It's so good. It's so good. I don't like setting light on crappy things to happen online. But somebody was being really dumb and racist about Javon Evans. And it went mini viral. So I just want to say, like, this kid's 19 and he's phenomenal. And uh, I wonder if that guy was as much of a loser at 19 as this guy is awesome at 19 or like is it like you know, fine I, wine where he becomes a bigger loser over time as his his years go, go on you don't have to wonder about that and my thing with these guys who are uh, like when you when you say the level of racism in in that statement you are playing strictly to other racists and if you've decided that you want to serve a niche that is just vile, racist wrestling fans, and that is all you're, pit you're pitching your show to, then I decide that you can, you can live in that echo chamber, and if anything leaks out of it, I just close it off. That is that something leaked out of that echo chamber. Now I know where the hole is. That's a block. Up, and I'm yeah. with life, and I, I personally would never address it because it doesn't need to be addressed cuz a it's the wrongest thing ever and it's just it's it's said for shock value to get thumbs up from a bunch of other vile racists so that's all i will say about that see i like um, when we say things like that because i i just always want it to be and i think people know by now but extremely abundantly clear what side we're yeah. on with that shit yeah. um cuz that was beyond nauseating yeah. Um, but this match was not nauseating. This was nauseatingly was awesome. So um, good. also like obviously Javon Evans just, I say it all the time. Like wrestling is one of the least natural things you can do. You only get this good through hard work. He must've been working his ass off because he's not only good at the moves, but he gets all of this like, and like, drag it off too. Doesn't normally tell a story in six minutes yeah. and him being like, this son of a bitch is really fast and athletic. I got to put this guy down. Excellent. 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 This yeah. was a, um, Chris Statlander had one of these, I can't remember who against, but it was like a four minute women's match. And I was so annoyed because they never get time, but it was also one of those things where it's like, there are certain test cases that prove that you can tell a full story in four to six minutes. Like there are happy mediums between the squash match and 10 minutes and up. And this was a very complete story yeah. in six minutes. Yeah. And I loved it. And a very productive loss for Javon Evans. A very yeah. fun win for Ilya Dragunov. And I just, because Dragunov's facial expressions are so uh, emphatic, but not cartoonish. Like, there was so much of this, like, is this guy going to pull one over on me? Like, I just love the way he tells stories in the ring. Yeah. Uh, and Javon Evans is, is the future. This guy's incredible. So very, very cool to see. Very, very cool to see. Um there's you're right that it does take hard work to be this good you can work your butt off and if you're not a one in uh i don't know five million level athlete like one out of five sure. million people in the world maybe more are as athletic as this good dude is just naturally and then you take that and then you build upon it you have to work hard to get better at it but there's a level of athleticism and just 
knowing your body. Yeah. Being able to like space the spatial awareness of as fast as I am moving through space while falling and gravity is taking me that I can twist myself and land on my feet or whatever we're going to do here that that most people, the grand majority of people who have ever lived could not do it no matter how hard they work at it. And the special guys and girls are the ones that figure out a way to meld absolute crazy mind bending natural talent and ability with i'm gonna work so damn hard to get better at this and when you figure out a way to have people who do both those are the people who are generational type talents because they're 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 they're, they know what they're doing in all this in a way and will always work to get better so you literally just uh summarized my like entire ethos as yeah of of art in general not just wrestling that is everything like the belief that you're naturally inclined certainly but hard work will outpace you if you do nothing about it so when you're naturally inclined and work really hard um that's incredibly special at 19 you know the shit i was doing at 19 crying over boys and skipping whatever shitty college math class i was at this guy's a phenom um so i i love it i i absolutely love to see it uh-huh. and the sky's the limit for that dude kind of in yeah. a literal way i think he's impervious to gravity so uh-huh. yeah um mm-hmm. louise saying that javon at 19 reminds me of pre lucha on uh lucha underground ray phoenix he's insane um Ooh, okay you know what i mean like it's crazy i'll take stuff. that i'll yeah. take that yeah um so um there was a, a, a also a good moment of like of Ilya like picking him up and being like hell yeah that was yes you, you impressed me that's that's good stuff too I like that I think um so. so um uh the thunderstorm has arrived that's fun um it's raining uh, in your house. Oh, oh, not in, in, but it's it's pounding the the walls of the house. This is fun. So if I if I lose if I lose signal, that is why. Not because the ghost of Dusty Rhodes has broken in to my thing. Not yet. Sure. Yet. No, of course not. Um, Tatum Paxley defeated Thea Hale because uh, Jasmine and JC. Um, before this match, which really wasn't much of anything, they didn't really tatum much of a chance to do much of anything because the interference happened so early in the match there was a backstage very awkward danny tanner and dj um danny tanner and the deej um just having having uh uh having um having a little talk not on not on the bed sitting on the bed but like on the road boxes just sitting there it's like so everything that JC said that Kalisha is true. Yeah, it is. Uh, midsummer uh, last year, I was uh, I was just betting my, on anything I possibly could, but I, I had it under control. And the only thing that stopped me uh, that where I really got out of line was I just believed so darn hard in you being able to beat Tiffany Stratton, put all that money on you because I knew you could do it. Because if there's one thing I know. That Thea Hale is going to be a women's champion one day, but then, when, when I saw you out there crying, tears streaming down your face in such pain, and I knew that you were too proud to give up, I had to throw in that towel, even if it meant losing everything I had worked so hard to achieve—a one-room college with with walls that are made out of curtains. I. It's, but I, I had to do it just for you because I love you so darn much. And oh, the so hail's like, curtains. I mean, this is, uh, come on. No, it is like uh, I'm giving blood at the Red Cross station. It is a wall that is made out of curtains. You're right. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Um, that's it. So. I was disappointed a little bit in this because we've seen Thea Hale react like a sincere human being in the past. I wish they just let her do that here instead Me of too. going back to to being I know. a little coked up Thea. Mm-hmm. Um, because like it's more easy to buy into people who 
exist than people who act like that. And it, it gives something to contrast all the insane energy, right? Like, it makes me appreciate that at least a little bit more if you also have this other side of you. So I just wish they let her lean into that aspect of it more. Andre Chase is really good at emotional appeal, to be honest. Like, this was cheesily written. I liked last week's segment better. Um, but, yeah, this was not great. And then the match wasn't much of a match. I'm not surprised that the second or third matches ran long, yeah. according to Corey. Right. Um, so, uh, Ali Cease, while I was talking about uh, that particular backstage segment, just said, NXT sucks. Who wants to see the cupcake I'm eating? Uh, well, yes, of course. Um, uh, Cogged says, I'm 26 next month, and I've been waiting. I've been watching wrestling my whole life. Hate to age myself, but I can in this case. LOL. This kid, Javon Evans, has it, and I can't wait to see what they do with him. Um, they're going to push him to the moon. Um, uh, I would have thought that I, about Ricochet and Montez Ford no, and whatever, though, too. But I mean, like, I'm saying in NXT. They pushed Ricochet pretty hard. He was the NXT. That North is true. Yes, that amazing is true. Stuff. In, in, uh, and, and Street Profits were pushed really hard when, when once he timed, teamed up with Angelo Dawkins, they were pushed pretty hard as well. I, I firmly believe what they should do with him is have him do a lot of like build, get to a title match with Obafemi, get knocked back down, build, get to a title match, get closer to beating him, get knocked back down, build a third time, and finally be the guy. Like Oba taking out that every giant he possibly can. The biggest, heaviest hitters come at him. And whenever Javon gets to him the first two times, he just slaps him back down. But the third time, Javon Evans finally beats him. It's, it's a fantastic, so fantastic simple. underdog story. It would be really great. A cool clash of styles. They should do that. Will they do that? I don't know. And if they don't do that, honestly, I have to be fine with it. Now you're being smarmy about it. Now this you're is, being this is, smarmy. This is like when you would you would make sure that I was doing the Nathan Fraser impersonation, even though you knew I hated it. You would just troll me. And so now I'm getting you back. But I loved doing that. And this is inauthentic to who you are as a human. No, just, I'm just doing it <laughs> because it makes you uh, you're, uncomfortable. You're getting my goat. I am. I'm getting your goat. I'm getting your Brian oh, Danielson. You're getting um, <laughs> Brian Danielson. Um, so... <laughs> Rox, Roxanne is being interviewed and like, if Lyra and Tatum want to go at it, that's awesome. Let them, let them fight next week. And I thought they were going to do this because honestly, it makes sense. Let them, Lyra versus Tatum next week. And the winner of that match, I'll face in two weeks on night two of spring break again. And, um, and look, I just look how easily I booked that. Ava's job is so easy. And then Ava coming out and basic like misuse of her power is like, honestly, just because you said that and I overheard it, I'm going to book you in a triple threat next week with the two of them. And Roxanne's like, oh, perfect. Yes, this is, this is really fair. Book me into another match where I don't have to be pinned to lose my title. And she's right. This is, she a, is, right. A, this is a misuse of power. Um, a, by Ava, and it's not. It's uh, honestly, I'm. I'm sh considering that her father is Dwayne Johnson, who never oversteps his bounds. Not a single as, as time a figure, as a figurehead in power. That I, I honestly, I I'm surprised she would ever do this. Uh, she literally says "womp womp." She does. womp womp. She literally says that into her face. I feel like on this episode, we got a lot of stuff that was more grounded and like booking and character. But Ava is like half manager, half narrator. Like, yeah, I kind of liked it. Like she was just like almost commenting on her own decisions at points. Uh, I am a firm believer Roxanne should be a face. She is settling into the heel thing and making it work. She, she yeah. is a little bit. This is. Uh, a decent thing to be pissed about as her mm -hmm. heel character. It makes sense with the rest of her story that got her to this point. Um, her in ring was is good heel. Uh, she's she's settling into pulling the cartoonishness of it back into to some yeah. sort of reality here. I just don't want her to have like the cadence everybody does and all that nonsense that we we've hammered that home before with her. Yeah. Um, but this is something she should be pissed about that. She should. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm pissed about um, it too. 
Will Chisholm says, look, guys, this is the NXT final boss. It is. She's going to she, she eat the she hell is. out of Roxanne with the belt. Um, <laughs> um, so AOP is on NXT. Just kidding. They're also on SmackDown. Like, literally pick a lane. Uh, after this draft. I hope they get drafted to Raw. Just to, just, let's do after, it. After this draft, I will have absolutely, I already have very little. I will have absolutely zero tolerance for any main roster talent appearing on NXT unless they're on NXT. The little dalliance they had with the with the with the with the Good Brothers coming down to like start a story that they never ended up finishing, like I don't know what the hell that was, but like Natalia's coming down here to do a thing with with Lola Vice and Roxanne, and right now it's going well. But like for example. If Natalia just never appeared on NXT again and we just forgot, we we're supposed to forget that she was actively feuding with Lola Vice and she just went back up to the main roster. That's what they were, that's what they did with, with the Good Brothers. And I'm not okay with it. AOP yeah. is in a match to determine the number one contenders for the SmackDown tag titles on Friday while they're actively pursuing the NXT tag titles. On Tuesday, pick a damn show and be on it. Yeah, and I'd also, I feel that way entirely. And I also feel like if you are going to float people back and forth, you cannot have them lose to Sheamus like a chump and then show up and be a big deal on NXT, right, which right. they did acknowledge to their credit. They acknowledged and they did a really good job of that. And I will talk about that with the next match, but yeah. Yeah. Um, but just here's... You wouldn't have to acknowledge it if you just didn't do that. So I, I prefer just don't do that. Uh, but like the lack of synergy between the two brands when you have had people going up and down, like being a tag team champion on a brand and also a guy that's squashing people as a single star on SmackDown, that stuff doesn't jive with me. And I, I don't like it at all. But if you're going to do it, at least have a little bit more consistency right. within it. That's all I ask. Um, they are on NXT. Karrion Cross is with them. Paul Ellering is with them. Scarlett is with them. It's the full Final Testament deal. They're out there, and um, they beat Malik Blade and Idris Enofe in short order, which is hard to believe because we saw Idris Enofe and uh, Malik Blade training with Brindley Reese, and it looked like they were just out there doing everything they possibly could to uh, to prove that they were. No, I'm kidding. Um, a few months ago, they had an amazing match. With the now current tag team champions, and like it was one of the best tag team matches I've ever seen on television. Tag match of the year. Period. Yeah. Period. And now they're fodder for anybody who comes in. They they were the ones who got squashed by the Good Brothers, and now they basically got squashed by AOP. I don't know. I when if you show that much talent. On like, there's zero meritocracy. If you if you have that match, and then do then they book you to do this. So I they've also been, um, they've just been at it a long time, and it feels like they've never really been on a track, or at least not in the past year and a half or so, which is not great considering that they have made strides and have improved, and their characters. I mean, the Brindley Reese stuff is kind of weird, but they're at least human beings now instead of this, like, sweater vest wearing wrestler. Like, that was weird, and now they're not. So, um, I'm considering the match they had with the current tag team champions, to your point, mm -hmm. and the fact that they are digging into something, it would be nice to have some consistent Ws. Um, it's also just weird because the tech division just feels a little lost right now. Like, I don't know where Gallus is or what they're doing. And well, um, they sometimes were. LWO is. We, we figured is out where they were. They were in Los Angeles on call for any time Dwayne needed to train for his tag match. That's right. And that's where they that's where they were. He's not training for a tag match right now. So you could bring Gallus back on stage any at any point. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, that makes so. yeah, that's right. Um, um but it, yeah. it's just been I think we had the the wolf dogs dropping yeah. on delay, <laughs> which worked. 
So now, like, let's get back to some contendership stuff. I think would would be for the best. <clears throat> um. Uh, uh, yeah. They 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 pretty easily beat them. And then uh, the Blurry Boys come out to like hold up their titles at the bottom of the ramp. So we're almost certainly getting that match at night two with Spring Brickkin and uh, or Brickkin two Electric Boogaloo, and we're doing that. And AOP wins, right? Like, right? Like, I, I mean, unless they're down for one title match and then they're back to either main roster show, it's so weird to do AOP, who should be booked as a serious threat wherever they go. And it's also be, be very weird if in the first title defense, the Blurry Boys lost the titles. So yeah, I don't, I don't know a, what the hell we're doing, honestly. I'm wondering if it goes to a non-finish and I hate it. Um, and it's also weird because you sent Karrion Cross too, right? So mm -hmm. it, it, it's just odd when they do this right before yeah. the draft because I just don't know. <laughs> I have no idea what to expect. Um, I feel like the match should be super fun. Like I'm very right. intrigued by the in ring of it, but it is, it is yeah. a weird call. It's a weird call for sure. And um, also, where, where, where did the Good Brothers go? I don't know. They had, a, they had an interview. I've seen headlines from an interview where, like, they were like, "We had fun in NXT. We there was there was no being upset about being, you know, called down or whatever." Like, okay, so it's over now. What are you? Well, now what are you doing? It must have Why been didn't you finish? Hashtag it's finish. Over now. Hashtag finish the story. Um, <laughs> so uh, uh, Josh Briggs is in the trainer's room. Uh, double vest. And uh, single vest, uh, Ivar walks in. Um, single vest and one braided beard. Um, so he he walks in and say, "Hey, how, how's it going? How are your ribs? Oh, they cleared me. Um, okay, but you know, I I've been in I was in this training room all over a, a, more times than I can count when I was down here, and I know that they cleared you, and all you want to do is get back out there. But take it from a guy who's done that a few times." you really want to take a little bit extra time to let everything fully heal up before you get out back out there. And he says, why don't you shut up and go back to raw and get your ass kicked by Seamus again? And Ivar's like, okay, fine. How about you and me in the ring tonight? If you feeling so spry. Um, so they acknowledged it. Ivar got pissed. That the guy brought it up, which he should. And Briggs is has broken rib. They said three broken ribs, not bruised ribs, broken ribs. Just got cleared, probably too early. They made a big deal out of it. So when Briggs loses to Ivar, you the guy who was just in contention for the North American title, got hurt during that match, ran his mouth about a guy losing on Raw, who's now in NXT, who's pissed about that loss, who takes it out on the guy who's protected by the by the loss because of the broken ribs, and now you've reestablished Ivar as a guy who can beat another big dude. Like, honestly, again, I hate that they did what they did last night by having Ivar be the one to lose to Sheamus like that, but they did as much as they possibly could tonight to right that wrong for night two of spring break again, uh, break again to electric. <laughs> I agree with you because now i just don't like it because of taste like i feel like they justified it enough that i can't say it was a bad decision right. it's just a decision i don't really like that they did yeah. um but i i also just hate the like you are tough if you come back from injury early stuff i just hate that yeah. as a yeah. as a thing for me i don't like right. i don't like danielson selling seizures i don't like right i, I don't bleh, not for me um but you're right about the fact that that was architected about as well as you could do that. It's, truly, it's like it, it really was, and it. I think it. It's good for Briggs to have a layer of grit behind him uh, and an attitude when talking to Ivar, and it makes sense that Ivar would want to fight him about it. Uh, so they did a they did a really good job of the justification behind that. It is making me very uncomfortable how much positive things we have to say about this episode. I mean, it. They did. They did what I've been asking them to do, which is to make things make sense. Which they made things make sense. It's so like comfortable. I don't know this world. <laughs> um, and and backstage, uh, they, they 
Oba is watching it, and they're like, uh, I'd like to get your reaction to that match. Interesting. He just walks off. Yeah, he's, he's the best so wrestler good. that's ever he's existed. So good. He's so good. So also, Ivar was supposed to win with the Doom Salt onto the broken ribs, Holy but shit. actually yeah. broke his face because he missed and landed full on the face. And because he landed full on the face, on the face, on the face of Josh Briggs, <laughs> there... They, the, the, like, Vic Joseph was supposed to go, oh, the damaged ribs come into play, but, like, the ribs got zero percent. No impact. Of All of the weight. All of the impact went directly nose. It's, yeah, man. I yeah. think I messaged you right after and said RIP bricks, because holy cow. Yeah. The fact that Ivar can do that is nuts to me. Like, yeah. it, it really it's, blows my mind. What I love is that it also, it's it's uh, the the big fat guy moonsault. It's the Bam Bam Bigelow moonsault, where it's like, you're kind of like half turning in the air to do it, because a full back is not going to work, so you kind of like right. got to yeah, go over one twist. shoulder, not yeah. both, and always looks cool. I wish more guys would do it, because it I looks cool. I actually think it looks kind of cool. Thing. Yeah. yeah I like it too. Um, so we got Trick Williams versus Carmelo Hayes. Carmelo cuts a little promo with his security guys. In a steel guys. cage. Uh, in a steel cage. Um, as I was watching this and with all the security guys outside and knowing that if you have guys outside, they're always going to figure out a way to try and get inside. And knowing that there is another night of Spring Break Again. The fastest trilogy of all time. <laughs> I thought they might have Carmelo Hayes like win with a chair shot after interference from all of his dudes. Trick Williams still gets his title match versus Ilya Dragunov. That's already been booked. But because Carmelo beat Trick, now Trick's got to beat him. It's 1-1. Now Trick's got to beat him on night two of Spring Break again to end the trilogy. And would I like it? No. But would it, would it, would I be like, okay, I get what you're doing. Fine. I don't get what we're doing. Unless there is a, a, a surprise angle after Trick beats Ilya Dragunov, presumably, next week. And there's somebody we were not expecting attacks Trick from behind while he's holding up the belt. And we all know we're probably getting that as the main event next week. And I mean, like, it could be somebody from the main roster coming down, or it could be, unfortunately, in my head, um, uh, um, it could be um, Trick Williams being attacked by Karrion Cross, and them doing Karrion Cross NXT champion versus Trick Williams. Um, so my internet is not cutting out. However, I've been told by my wife via text message, my basement is flooding. So I am going to go deal with that. And okay. I, I'm sorry, we just got through the last match. Uh, I, you, you have access to the document. I'll try and get back up as soon as I can. Probably won't be in here in time to do jukeboxes and the like. I, I No, don't. that's okay. I'll do the rest of the Super Chats um, yeah. and... Yeah. If you can't get up here, that's fine. If not, yeah. maybe we'll do oh. we'll do a jukebox separate episode or something. Because sure. okay. I don't have a Ricky Rainbow wig, but no, no go not, touch no, your no. basement, no. please, yeah. for okay. the love of God. Bye. All right, bye. bye. Oh my goodness, it's Dusty, the ghost of Dusty Rhodes. <laughs> we unfortunately don't get that tonight, but I will go through some of. Your wonderful puns and the rest of your super chats. Thank you for <laughs> that unexpected uh, little break in our action. But let's talk some super chats and humper chats. Feel free to get them in. Uh, we'll figure out something to do with the jukebox. We'll either move them to next week or um, we will go ahead and uh, do a separate mini episode if there are enough of them. But more talk about the draft. Ryan Sacchini saying... Ilya Blair Mello giving fu the future a rub on their way to being drafted. Um, man, I feel like Blair is such an interesting one. I, I I really does feel like she's giving people the rub on the way up, but like she is so main roster ready to me. I kind of wish she was more in that discussion. I feel like her and um, Kiana James are two of the more ready names than get thrown around. 
Um, so I, I would like to see some love for them. And I would like to see Gigi Dolan and JC Jane get given more creative attention because I think they are not far behind. Yeah, I'm on my couch today. This lovely little charcoal gimmick here. Uh, I had raccoons in my attic. If you guys caught the select post show yesterday, um, there's been a lot of efforts to get the little raccoons out of my closet. So what I did was pulled everything in my attic down because that's, well, it's like a sweet little raccoon family that's up there. Um, very gross. And I want to clean everything. So that's on my normal setup. And now I'm on my couch for the next day or two. But uh, Josh Mansfield saying WWE explicitly referred to the NXT title as the world title on its website when Drew won it from Bobby Roode in 2017, but devalued it in 2021. They went back and forth with whether NXT counted on championship reigns so much in the like Vince is in charge era. No, he's not. He's back. No, he's not era. Um, because I think he and Hunter obviously had different attachments to NXT. And Vince also would just make up numbers when it's convenient, right? So if that week he felt like it was better for Charlotte Flair to have a million title reigns, uh, he would absolutely do that. So um, I just ask for consistency. It, it's up to them one way or the other, whether they count it or not. Uh, Jam Beard saying, if Drew resigns with WWE, call up Gallus to be his new Scottish bastard stable. They're kind of running into a thing. I've seen a, a lot of people kind of participating in the discourse, as it were, for you, um, where they they are getting very ethnic stable heavy again. Some of these stables just absolutely rule and work regardless of ethnicity. Like, I don't think it's so ethnocentric as much as it is these people all work really well together and happen to be of the same uh, nationality. I think Carlito's coming back is kind of a bigger bust than people were hoping for. But outside of that, like, I love what they did with damage control and stuff like that. So I, I don't think it's always a bad idea to do that, but I think they do need to watch out for it. Um, Drew leading a faction would absolutely rule. Uh, this chat saying, should they reform Gigi and JC? They're better together. I would like to see them as a tag team. I feel like they might have missed the opportunity to do it the right way. Um, you can rebuild anything, but the women's tag division is is messy anyway. But I do feel like they deserve a better spotlight. NXT is incredible, and I say this week over week, so I don't mean for it to be redundant. But NXT is really incredible about giving women's wrestling a lot of screen time. But sometimes those stories get a little lost in the shuffle because they're either not structured the right way or whatever. I think the mid-card title is going to help that a lot. Love for the booth saying, that's like my dream. I want adorable little raccoons to break into my house and PPFS with me and my kitty. So um, I will say that they like made all these efforts and built all these contraptions to keep the parents out and the parents broke back in. Like animal control was here and they were like, the mom is like bloodied and battered and growling at us and angry. And the dad is so scared. They came back for the babies that are in there and me and my neighbor who's across from me. I live in a quadplex. We're on the top floor because we can hear them upstairs. And we were both like, can we just keep them? Like we love this little family, but we can't do that. That's there's a lot of reasons we can't, but we all really, really want to. Let's get into some puns, please. We'll rock and roll with C. Delgado saying Christy Hemline. That's very good. Uh, Ian Riccoboni with Zipper Saber Jr. I love my ZSJ ones. Also with Textile Team 2000. My Techno Team 2000 and my ZSJs back to back. Love you, Ian. Thank you so much for that. And Polo Sokoa is very good. Tailored Team 2000 as well. Uh, insert Clever, clever Team and Knox Pun with Donna Tegan Versace, very nicely done. Sappho with uh, Bob and Lashley, which is very good. Bespokely Hathaway is unbelievable. Very well done. And Red Velvet, just leaving it there. I'll tell you what Alex's was. I probably shouldn't do it in the middle, but I'm gonna, so I don't forget. Pants Archer. He just went with Pants Archer and oh, beautiful stuff there. Uh, <laughs> House of Couture which is very nice. And the devil wears Parada, which is excellent as well. Meet Normus with Oba Fenty. Very, I love Oba Femi getting some fashion. Uh, Tommy Hilfiger for leg lock. Uh, you guys know I'm a TMDK stan. 
the figure four leg lock pin that Shane Haste put on to win the New Japan uh, Strong Tag Titles. Excellent stuff. Excellent stuff. Ian with Michael Cowell. Very nice. Booker Pleats and Poncho El Cerro Miedo. Very good. Chris Barrera with Tiffany and Co. Stratton. Excellent. Because that also feels like her. I love that. Ian with Pinafore Horseman. Very nice. Chris with Dolce and Gabagool. <laughs> Very on brand for us. Luis, our wonderful moderator, who shouldn't pay but always does, saying, because of Lash Legend shoes tonight, Paul Off-White. Very nice. Very nice. Ricardo, Dolce Colt Cabana. Very good. Uh, Jam Beard with Stan Hansen's clothesline. Just his clothing line. I love that. I love that. Tom LaValle with the undershirt taker. That's excellent. The North Face Buster. North Face Buster. Very good from Chris. Uh, Chris is really good at this game. Not going to lie. A lot of you guys are. But, man, sometimes he just brings the heat. Uh, Deanna Palazzo Pants from Ian. Chris with Jimmy Chuso. Get it, Chuse. I like that a lot. Uh, also, Michael Colhan. Very good. You guys coming in with the designer. Ian with Jacoba Fevi. <laughs> All I can think about is um, a JBL with those like Janko pants that he had when he returned that one time. Uh, the new catch Banana Republic is very good from Chris as well. Meet Normus with S. Scott Hall. Rest in peace. Maxine Capri and Fedora Mensa. Those are really good. Uh, T Electric Mayhem with Plaid Gable. Feeling dreepy with the mighty dress cool. I love my TMDK. Thank you so much. Um, they do dress cool. They have some really cool merch. You should go buy it. Um, buy Shane Hayes shirt. He'll be very happy. Uh, Chris Pereira with Christian Cage Louis Vuitton. <laughs> very nice. Uh, 2LT photo with Cotton, the fabric of premium live events. Very nice. Ian with Von Dutch Wagner. We haven't seen him in a while. I wonder what's going on with that dude. Two LT photo with uh, Booker T. Very nice. And Bobby Fishnuts. Also very nice. I didn't know Bobby Fish and Effie was a tag team I needed, but Bobby Fishnuts is making me think that. Louisville with Steph DeZoolander, which is so good. I love that movie so much. Uh, two LT photo with Tube Top Dollar. Very nice. And Mini Skirt Angle. Man. Kurt Angle is just making me think about how great that Chad Gable heel turn was last night. And Alex and I on Fightful Select, he came up with a really fun uh, him and the Creed Brothers heel Alpha Academy Kurt Angle run. Great binding ankle locks. Uh, go to FightfulSelect.com and listen to it. It was so much fun. Chris Pereira with Stone Cold Steve Madden. Very good. Uh, two LT photo with Karrion Cross body bag. My goodness like a cross body bag. But when I see body bag now, I just think of Tony D and how he's killing everybody off. Um, Alex Pablowski, uh, Kate Spade, Elizabeth. Thank you. And Rivar. Very nice. Very nice. Sorry. Dyslexia doing my best. Ricardo with Zach Zipper Jr. Another one that we got in there. Thank you so much. Uh, Jesse Ozog with they stole one or 10 lashes matches. I love that. I need, I miss my lash extensions. Um, Chris Barrera with tie jack, <laughs> tie dye jack. I think, oh, tie dye. I get that. I was thinking like a tie tack, but I get where you're going with tie dye. Very nice. Uh, T Electric Mayhem with Spank Studley. <laughs> Ricardo with TJ Max Wilson. Very nice. Uh, Rolexus King from Chris. Uh, Tom LaValle with Captain Louis Vuitton Albano. Oh, that's so good. I love that one. Uh, T Electric Mayhem with On the Red Carpet. They ask you, Coco, who you be wearing? I love that. Coco Beware. Oh, one of my favorites. One of the first ones when I went to look at wrestling before I was watching in real time that just oh, fell in love with them. Uh, Ricardo with Vera Wang Yang. Oh, my God. That's so good. Um, Jam Beard with Luis Pullover, our own Luis Polito. I love that. Uh, Greg Cherry with Ensemble Nakano. Uh, Russilklicious. You know I love my Russilicious. Thank you, Greg Cherry. Trendy Richter is very good. And Bank Statement Piece. Look at you with, like, the, the fashion lingo. I love that, Greg. Thank you. Um, 
<laughs> Great win by the BJs over the Wankies today to win the series. It's a baseball thing. Thanks, Jam Beard. I'll take your money for the baseball insults. Whatever. Um, some more about spring break akin. Uh, main event night two could be a five woman ladder match for the new uh, North Women's North American title. I do wonder if it's going to be like the thing that kicks off uh, the North American title, whether it's a tournament or whatever. Uh, that that could be a good main event. Uh, and as far as the steel cage match, we got a chat that said, "Worried to see what the NXT men's division is at the top without Melo, Ilya, and Dijak if they're drafted. If she is too, I feel Blair is getting called up cold." <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I don't. I just gut instinct. I don't think Dijak's gonna go up yet. I think you could very easily call him up after the draft into some sort of angle if you wanted to, and he's doing such good work there that I think they probably want to keep him around. They have to sign him. You got to sign him first. But guys, we're going to get out on that. I'll talk to Alex about it. You guys sent in a lot of jukeboxes, and I hate to leave you hanging without a Ricky Rainbow or anything, but we'll either do a mini episode or carry these over to next week. Uh, obviously, Alex's basement flooding put a wrench in things, so we're going to call it a night. But thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we'll remind you real quick to subscribe to FightfulSelect.com. We are up to like almost 14,500 subscribers. You guys are incredible. Some of those subscribers are on the free tier. Feel free to join our free tier. You'll get um, the headlines of everything that we publish on the paid tier. You'll also get news that's a little bit bigger than wrestling. So anything going on with the federal investigation for Vince McMahon, anything that's sexual misconduct related in general, goes on the free tier. That's where that Drew Gulak story is, unfortunately. Injury-related things also go on the free tier, so you can check those out as well. You also get Alex Pulaski and I doing Sour Graps every Monday night. Uh, we also do pay-per-views that are not NXT as an alternative post-show behind the paywall, so please subscribe to Fightful Select and join the Discord. It's a nice, curated, safe, moderated environment. I was in there yesterday. There's an Ask SRS channel. If there's something that you want to ask him, uh, you can hop in there and ask him as well. Tons of stuff, wrestling related and non. So hop in to the Fightful Select Discord. <clears throat> We're going to call it a night. My voice already did. Um, but have a wonderful night and we'll see you next week. <coughs> Excuse me.